if someone listens to this and they want to come and pick your brains and they 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 want to email you or, or contact you on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever and they because they want to start their own newsletter, what would you tell them? Uh, eight things. So there's eight, eight things. things. So yeah. yeah. All right, so get me get me chair. So it's create your own lane. Don't be the same, but be different. So you know, go at it yourself. Find your own path or your own avenue. Go for the format that works for you. Don't. Is that, just going back to it. point one. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you and be a bad host. Is that easier said than done? You can people copy, but copying is difficult, right? So you can you can copy in my format, but being consistent over it and finding something that's interesting enough to a different audience is going to be difficult. So yeah. find something that's relevant for you, or you can you can have an opinion on, as opposed to you know rather than just have an opinion for an opinion's sake actually add value to the audience yeah so you know if i one of my goals is to get someone to guest edit must reads and see how well it does for the next year <laughs> but that could go horribly wrong for me it could go really well successfully for the newsletter it could go horribly wrong for me because it just m- might have a completely different audience a different level of connection whereas they might be bored of my own stuff right but i think you should be always be different you can always be inspired but choose your own path it's how okay. I would explain it to people. Go for the format that works for you. Writing isn't for everyone and it isn't easy. I think it's probably the hardest form of, of creating. And just ask ask any book writer that. It's really difficult. Yep. So if it's TikTok and short video, do it. Or YouTube shorts. Or if it's longer form, do it. Or or if you want to do audio notes, which I'm, I've always thought about doing, do it. If it's a podcast, try and do it. It's really hard. Get past that magic eight number and then, then, yep. then you can... You can go for it. And then Building your hard. audience, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Building your audience is eight percent of the job. Yeah. Find the right tools to help you. The tools I use probably might not help other people. And uh, there's a million tools out there to so find the tools for you. Making mistakes is part and parcel of what you do. So just either own it or embrace it. Find people like you can co-partner with or co-co-brand or partnership with. I don't do this enough, but I know that it really helps other newsletters. Uh, don't do two, two newsletters a week. It isn't sustainable for most people. Um, some weeks I struggle, and that's, you know, and that's why I dedicate a lot of time for it. What, and what about daily newsletters? Uh, oddly enough, I think it's probably that might be slightly easier if you, if you were to do it every day because okay. you get into a rhythm and a pattern, whereas I think if you do two very different newsletters – it can be quite difficult to to flip between the two or stick with a tone that you've decided to write with. Yeah, yeah. And just a last tip, competition is healthy. What do you mean by that? So you're going to get people who compete with you, but actually use it to inspire you or to challenge you to improve as opposed to um, get put off that they've got a big audience. Who who do you compete with? Uh, sleep and the Netflix <laughs> way of doing it. No, uh, in all honesty, I think I like personally I compete with every different channel, right? So I compete with your email, your WhatsApp. You know, if yeah. you wanted to watch, um, you know, the latest F one thing on Netflix, I'll compete with that because I'm stealing time away from other things. Yeah. So I'm only a notification away from being ignored. So for me, competition is is everyone, but that's my product, like you know, product person head headspace no no I, you know, I, <clears throat> I think that's a a theory that you talk about there that is is often overlooked in a lot of things is actually you know you break the day down into minutes or whatever every minute is a competition whether it's your newsletter whether it's i don't know your kid or whether or not it's whatever it is and it's interesting, I mean, we've both got marketing backgrounds, but often a lot of people talking marketing about your competition will be brand X or brand A or, but it's not actually, is it, in, in the content world? It's, every, you're right, I think everyone is is uh, the competition because you just get into the point where, I did it the other day, I do it all the time. I'll open up a thing on my phone, browser, and then the notification will come through and then I'll go and look at whatever it was. And then I'll come back to the Safari browser and I, for the life of me, I can't remember what I was going to search yeah. for all the time. That's the funny thing around tabs as well. I know this is a broader theme, but your tabs, 
if you're and if you're curious, you've probably got like fifty tabs open, and you probably wouldn't remember the the third tab in. That was the reason why you had it open, but that's the I'm that's the you compete against all of those, and you're competing against a text message or you know yeah. a, a WhatsApp from one of your friends or you know group chats or people complaining on on another channel. Yeah, kind of mad, isn't it? Do you think like just finishing up on that? You know, if someone came up to you, question: Do you think there's still room in the market for someone to start? A successful newsletter today yeah i think there's always there's always opportunity for people and i think you're only one share away from blowing up really and still in yeah. the way that the internet works today so i think there definitely is like and i think there's an outlet for everyone it's just everyone's a content creator that like they're creating content whether that's at work um an email or on whatsapp or what have you so they're already doing it so you know i I've got a framework that I tell people when they ask me and it's EIE, which is uh, entertainment, inspiration, education. So if you can fit into those and say, and know which one you fit into, I yeah. think you've, you've got an opportunity. And then whether that applies to a newsletter, podcast, short video presentations, which is something that I love creating. Um, <laughs> or if, you know, if it's your preference, you know, something like OnlyFans, if you, if you've got a niche, um, yep. that works in there as well so and then there are three types of content in my mind it's timely so you know the world we live in is is right now there's time yep. sensitive content there's timeless posts you know which are like updates that anyone can go back years down you know years later and still find really useful yep. and i just think you have to decide what you're most applicable to and build the associating audience and then you can be successful so it doesn't have to be a newsletter. It could be a podcast, YouTube. YouTube's hard now. But yeah, but yeah that's, that's the start. sort of way that I look at it. 